Welcome to part two of the Children's Product Certificate series. In this video, we'll walk through creating three CPCs for three different scenarios. Note that all items mentioned are fictitious business names, labs, and contact information. The first step to creating your CPC is copying and pasting these seven elements into a Word document. Check out part one of the series if you'd like more information on each element. All you need to do is answer all seven elements to complete your own CPC. In this first example scenario, I am an importer based in Canada, and the cribs that I import are manufactured in China. I completed all the required testing for my cribs, so now I'll start filling out the answers to these seven elements. For the first element, all I need to do is describe my product that's covered by the CPC. This description includes all the different models and colors that have been successfully tested. In the second element, I'll need to include the required children's product safety rules for cribs. If you're unsure of where to find citations for your product, I recommend using our regulatory robot tool. The link to the robot tool will be provided at the end of this video. So the citations I've listed here are for the testing requirements for full-size cribs, which are total lead content, lead and paint and surface coatings, phthalates, small parts, and the full-size crib standard. In the third element, I put down my company, which is Cribs 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 Importers. You'll see that my address is not based in the US. The CPC does not require you to have a US-based address, so my Canadian address is perfectly fine for the purposes of the CPC. In this section, I put down my colleague's name since she's the person in my business that maintains record keeping for our testing reports. And I also put down our company name and address again, as well as Lisa's direct phone number. August to October 2021 is when the cribs were manufactured. Notice I don't need to have one specific month and I can have a range of dates here. And I also put down the city, province and country of where the cribs were manufactured. In this section, I need to include the date and place the cribs were tested. I included the month and year, as well as the city, province, country of the CPSC accepted third-party laboratory. And finally, for the last element, I include the name, address, and phone number of the laboratory where the cribs were tested. And now I'm finished creating the CPC and can start selling my cribs to US consumers. The second CPC is for a baby blanket that's 100% fabric with no screen printing. This product would not require any testing, but all children's products need a CPC, even those that don't have any testing requirements. In element one, I describe my product, which is a yellow baby blanket. Under citations in section two, the only rule this product is subject to is total lead content because all children's products fall under this rule. I don't need to test this product for lead due to a determination made by the commission, but I'm still citing this here since it's a rule for all children's products. And then I'll clarify this in section six and include the citation that states my product does not require lead testing. Next, I'm including my company name and address and then the name, address, and contact information of the person that maintains record keeping of testing reports. This product was manufactured in New York City in July 2020. Then section 6 is where we'll address the lead testing determination. The commission made a determination in 16 CFR 1500.91 that certain materials are unlikely to contain lead and do not require lead testing. This product falls within the determination since it is 100% fabric. I need to include that as well, so I put down lead testing determination for textiles and fabrics after citing 16 CFR 1500.91. Then in the final section, there was no testing required, so I just put down not applicable. In this final example, I produced children's shirts and jeans. My children's shirts are made of 100% polyester blend, and my children's jeans are constructed with plain surface fabric, weighing more than 2.6 ounces per square yard, 
or 88.2 grams per square meter. I describe my products in the first section. I'm creating one CPC for two different products, shirts and jeans, so I need to describe each product with colors and sizing details. In section 2, I list the rules applicable to my products, which are total lead content, lead and paint, and flammability of clothing textiles. In section 3, I put down my address and phone number, and in section 4, my own name, address, and phone number since I maintain my own records for my small business. In section 5 is the date and place of where I manufactured the clothing products. I manufactured the shirts and jeans on different dates, so I included both dates for each product here. In the next section, I include the dates and places of when the products were tested. I used two different labs, so I included information for both here. My products do not require lead testing due to the determination on textiles and fabrics, so I cited 16 CFR 1500.91 here. My products also don't require flammability testing because the shirts are made of 100% polyester blend and my jeans are made of plain surface fabric weighing more than 2.6 ounces per square yard or 88.2 GSM. This citation is included here along with the specifics of how my products fall under this exemption. In this final section, I included the names, addresses, and phone numbers of the two labs I used to test my products. You can visit our website for further information for certification of your products. You can also visit our regulatory robot tool if you need assistance on testing requirements and citations.